Good morning and welcome to service. Please stand in the house of the Lord. If you're glad to be here, can you give God praise? Amen. Today's Pentecost Sunday, so let's just invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Well, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. And bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. 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 We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We lift up our hands, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, we declare, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, declare. Joy in the Holy we Ghost. Declare, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Hey, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, we lift up, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, declare. We declare joy in the Holy Come Ghost. Come on, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. 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 We lift up, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Come on, come on, church. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Come on, somebody declare. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Hey, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, we declare. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Hey, we declare joy in the Holy Ghost. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We declare joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, musicians. Holy Ghost, come on down. Sit him 
Hallelujah. Well, can you? Can you feel him in your hands? Can you feel him in your feet? Do you feel him all over you? Praise God. Hallelujah. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Seem good to the Holy Ghost and to us. Praise God to come together today. This is Pentecost Sunday. I'm praying this will be a momentous day, that this will be a glorious day. God's outpouring of his spirit upon his church, upon his people. What a privilege it is to be a part of the family of God. We're delighted to have you with us today. We appreciate you coming. Good to have you that are visiting with us in service. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, we mentioned this to you last week. We'll mention it again this week. If you would like, if you just feel comfortable. I know families are together, but if you want to scatter out, you can. You can sit up here in the choir if you want to. It's all right with me. Just want you to feel comfortable, but we want to keep our minds on the Lord. Don't want to keep our minds on CDC or CNC or CNN or anything else. Keep our minds on the Lord today and worship Him because He's the answer. He's the solution. He's the deliverer. You say, well, Pastor, there's still a lot of churches that are not having church. Well, that's them. This is us. You know, I, I pray about this. I think about it. I'm thinking, well, you know, are you going to wait till they have a, a vaccine? Are you going to wait till this thing goes away? You know, why not just step out on faith and say, oh, God, we're going to trust you to be with us, to help us as we worship you. If we do get sick, we know he's the great healer, the great deliverer, Jehovah Rophe. We know God can heal and deliver and set free. But in the meantime, we're just going to worship the Lord. We're going to come together. It's not right to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Thank God our president recognized that and many of our ministers that went up against Raleigh the other week and said, hey, it's not right to open up everything else and keep the church shut down. Amen. If you can go to Walmart and you can go to the grocery store, you can go to Lowe's and Home Depot. If you can go to the mall, you can go to church. Amen. Go to the house of God. Worship the Lord. Praise God. Amen. We'll remind you that we've got to ease back into this because we know I noticed a lot more people were a little more nervous last week than they are this week. We survived. I told you we were the guinea pigs last week. And folks said, well, if they... <laughs> If they live this week, we'll go to church next week. Well, we're still living. We're still here. And uh, we're back today. We're only having this one service, our 11 o'clock service. But the Lord willing, the creek doesn't rise, and you're willing, we're going to begin next Sunday getting back to schedule, back to Sunday school at 10 o'clock, worship at 11, Sunday evening, 6.30, and then the following Wednesday night at 7. Is that okay with you? Amen. I don't want to be the only one here me and my wife, but we'll be here, the Lord willing. I'm ready for it. I, am, I, I just don't want, I'm like a racehorse ready to get out on the track. You know, I don't like being shut in. I'm ready to get back to the house of God, especially so much the more as we see the day of the Lord approaching. Have you ever seen a time like this? Something is happening constantly, constantly. There's a turmoil that's going on, letting us know the Lord is soon coming. Praise God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. I did want to mention to you that if you are a Sunday school teacher, the literature is in a box out on the foyer, on the information desk. Be sure and pick up your uh, teacher's book if you need to do that today if you're a teacher. And also the uh, calendars uh, for this year. Be sure and pick those up for this coming month. For the month of June, you believe tomorrow is the first day of June. It's hard to believe. This year is going by so quickly. So be sure and pick that up so you can stay informed as to what's going on. And uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's remember, uh, I believe her name is Trina. This is uh, Sister Fitzgerald's friend and diagnosed with cancer. She asked us to pray for her and also my wife's sister, Sylvia. Uh, she had some surgery this week. She's not doing well. She's in a lot of pain. Pray that God would touch her. And if Sylvia's watching, Sylvia, we're praying for you, believing God to touch you and heal you. Do you have unspoken requests but lift a hand? Let's believe the Lord for these today. Pray for a move of God's spirit in this service. Our Father in heaven, we bless you today. We're so thankful that we can come together to worship you. We long for your presence. We long, Lord, to draw near to you. We ask you to move upon all today that are sick and suffering and hurting. 
We ask you, Lord, to move mightily and bring healing and deliverance. Bring, Lord, the help that those individuals need, the problems, the pain, the suffering. We know that with your stripes we are healed. We ask you to move today, Lord, upon all those that are lost, that they would call upon your name to be saved. We pray for peace in our nation. We pray for healing in the land. We ask you, God, to move mightily and show us your glory. Show us your mighty hand. We bless you and thank you for your wonderful presence we've already felt. Thank you, God, for what you're doing, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Good morning, Matthews Church of God. What a blessing it is to have a pastor that's a visionary, that doesn't operate on fear, that operates on faith. We are so blessed to have Pastor Brackett as our leader. Let's go ahead and we're going to talk about tithes and offerings. And this is something I feel that God laid on my heart. I just want to remind you how amazingly joyful it is to pay our tithes. It's literally the joy that we receive when we pay our tithes is literally inexplicable. The world can't understand it. They don't understand it. We hopefully understand it. That being said, I have to be honest with you. Paying our tithes and paying my tithes can be tough. There is an opportunity cost involved in paying tithes. And if done correctly, it should hurt. Because we have to remember that God requires sacrifice in our offering. And we have to ask ourselves, if it doesn't hurt at least a little, then it probably isn't sacrificial. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to understand today, help lay on our hearts and our minds to help understand that everything we have comes from you. Divine providence comes from you. The fact that we have jobs, the fact that we have friends, the fact that we have talents and skills, it all comes from you, Lord. Let us understand and let us not be prideful in our ways and understand that without you, without your hand, without your love, Without you watching over us, Lord, our lives would be miserable. Lord, you're beautiful and wonderful, and you look out for us every second of every day. We want to worship here, you here today in understanding of that, Lord. You're a mighty, holy God, and you require much from us. You actually just require little, God, but let us at least give little so that we can someday give much. Lord, we love on you here, right here, right now. We thank you for what you did yesterday, what you're doing right here today, and what you're going to do tomorrow. We continually praise you in your son's beautiful name. Amen. Oh, yeah. Uh, folks, if you want to go ahead and come on up and, uh, and pay your tithes, that would be great. Thank you. Tired of the devil's games, keeping me in bondage to my sorrows and pain. I can live better, I won't go another day. I'm here to claim deliverance in his name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling, crash on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Joy of the Lord falling, fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Now I have royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the King. I've been buried in His name. There's no devil that can come against me. I've been blessed. I've been bought. I have been set free. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. the 
joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. Now I have royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm a child of the King. I've been buried in His name. There is no devil that can come against me. I've been blessed. I've been bought. I have been set free. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Well, I've been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee for the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. Well, I have been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee for the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. For the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living heart your presence Lord I have tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcomed here come flood and feel the atmosphere your glory
let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Hallelujah. Can you stand in his presence right now? Come on, every hand lifted high. Come on, the Spirit of God is here. We want you here, Jesus. Oh, he comes on the wings of praise. Spirit, breathe on us today.
Thank you, musicians. I feel him here today. Praise God. This is what we pray for. We pray all week long, God, show us your glory. Let your presence fill the house. Let the Holy Ghost move in a mighty way. And aren't you glad he's heard our prayers? He has shown up in the midst of his church today. Praise God to touch us and to help us. Praise God. Just remain standing, if you will, please, for the reading of the word. I want to read from the golden text of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. And while you're getting ready to go there, we've had a couple of firsts today. First time we've heard the Bishop family sing. Didn't they do a great job? Blessed us. They're singing, mother and sons. Thank God for them. I believe this is the first time I've heard Sister Pauline Blake play the tambourine. She's back in town. Amen. Maybe there'll be some other firsts here today. Maybe you'll be the first one to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. Praise God. I'm believing the Lord to move and to bless in a mighty way. Praise God for his presence. Hallelujah. When you feel his presence like this, you kind of feel like the astronauts felt yesterday on that lift top feel like I'm about to lift off any time. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. I want to read verses 1 through 4 and then verse 39. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to speak to you this morning on the source, the force, and the course of Pentecost. Would you pray with me and ask God's anointing today? Father, we thank you for allowing us once again to be in the presence of such a holy God. We come together today, Lord, to worship you. Let everything that has breath praise you and lift up holy hands in the sanctuary and make a joyful noise unto you. 
We welcome you, Holy Ghost, sweet presence, the gentle dove. We welcome you today to fill this house. Pour out your spirit upon us. Let us experience Pentecost afresh and anew. I pray for your touch, Holy Ghost. I pray for the divine enablement and unction of the Spirit to minister the Word for the liberty that only you can provide. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every heart, every mind, every soul, and every spirit, and let us be together today in unity. Let us dwell together in unity and worship you together. Lord, we welcome you to have your way in everything that's said and everything that's done. We give you all the glory and all the praise for all you do. For it's in the lovely and holy name of Jesus Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. You may be seated. The disciples were filled with fear and despair as they locked themselves away in a room. You can't really blame them because they had just seen the Lord, their precious friend, suffer such a terrible public death at the hands of the government and a ruthless empire. You can't really blame their reaction after what they had just witnessed. But thank God, things didn't end with the crucifixion. It didn't end with the resurrection. And it didn't end with the ascension. When Jesus showed up that day in that room full of fear, the very first thing that he said to his disciples was peace be unto you. If there's ever been a time that we needed to receive that peace, now's the time. The peace of God that passes all understanding. That peace, that wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. He said, peace be unto you. And then he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In verse five of Acts one, it says, for John, truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Jesus was preparing them for his departure. He was preparing them for when he would go away. And he said in John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The church today has become a lot like the disciples locked away in a room filled with fear. They were a church with sweaty palms, shaky knees, and bolted doors as much of a church as they were. They were not really a church. To be locked away like they were, that was not much of a church. But they were waiting around to see what was going to happen to them. They were worried about their future, what the future held and what the future would bring to them. You know, today we have built solid brick churches. We have bolted the pews to the floor. We printed out our bulletins and we have an order of worship. But could it be that we have tied everything down and made the church so predictable until we've left little, if any, room for the Holy Ghost? Maybe we're afraid that if we pray for the Holy Ghost to come and pray for a return to Pentecost, that our routine might be disrupted. Jesus told the disciples about the Holy Ghost. 
He said, it's expedient for you. It, it's important. It's good for you that I go away so the comforter, the paraclete will come. He'll come alongside of you. Jesus on this earth could only be in one place at one time. But he said, when the comforter is come, he will fill this earth everywhere you go. He will abide with you. I was thinking just a moment ago, it just don't know me that 50 years ago, I received the baptism of the Holy Holy Ghost and he's been abiding with me ever since. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He told them, he said when the Holy Ghost comes he's gonna reveal the truth to you. He's going to enable your faith. He's gonna guide you with spiritual power. He's going to comfort you in your time of sorrow. What a comforter that he is. But they had no idea what was about to happen to them. I want to tell you, I was brought up in a Pentecostal church. I was brought up in the church of God, been in the church all my life, but I had no idea how different my life was going to be after I received the Holy Ghost. I thought I knew. I'd watched other people, but I never knew until I received him how he would change my life. These men, they went from a bunch of cowardly men shaking and trembling behind doors that were bolted shut to bold men of faith who ended up going everywhere preaching the gospel and turning the world upside down. When the great evangelist Gypsy Smith was asked, what is the greatest need of the church? He said, the greatest need of the church is another Pentecost. They said, well, what is the second greatest need of the church? He said, another Pentecost. They said, what is the third greatest need of the church? He said, another Pentecost. And oh, as we look around at the power shortage the church is suffering today, oh, how we need to agree with Gypsy Smith that we need another Pentecost. We need another inrush of the Spirit. We need another move of the Holy Ghost today. They tell us that 85% of patients that visit their doctor they go to visit him and complain of fatigue, 85% of fatigue. It's one of the top 10 reasons for seeking medical help. People are tired. Just look around, talk to people, they're tired. They're lacking energy. And what's true of people is true of the church. The church has grown tired and weary and there's a lack of energy. There's a lack of enthusiasm. There's a lack of zeal in the church today because the cares of life, the responsibilities, the problems that people face today have sapped the life right out of the church. We need another Pentecost. We need another outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We need the disruptive power of the Holy Ghost to change and to transform the church for such a time as this. Jesus is coming back for a living bride. He's coming back for a vibrant bride. He's coming back for a church that's filled with his spirit and with his power. Pentecost, the source of Pentecost is found in verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. From heaven. This wonderful gift, it cannot be manufactured by man. You cannot create it. You can't make it happen. You can't work it up. No matter how fast you sing, no matter how loud you get, you cannot work this up. It comes down from heaven. But that doesn't stop many folks from trying to fabricate this wonderful experience. There are charlatans who were put on side shows who, who are complete with faked healings and stage dramas and manipulation. It's time to stop faking the anointing. It's time to stop putting on a show. It's time for a real experience with God that can change and transform our lives. The Holy Ghost doesn't need our help to accomplish the will of God. It's foolish to sprinkle glitter all around the church and claim that it's God's glory. It's foolish to hide fake jewels so that you can try to prove that you're God's anointed. It is silly to hide chicken feathers up your sleeve and pretend that angels have been in the church. 
It's deceptive. It's lying against the Holy Ghost. We see the gift of the Holy Ghost. Many see the gift of the Holy Ghost being used and as a means to get rich. There's still some ancestors of Simon Magus around who thought he could buy the gift of the Holy Ghost. They're full of greed like Sapphira and Ananias. They try to merchandise the Spirit's anointing by offering blessings for a seed or for a miracle offering. You can get a blessing. Let me tell you, you don't pay for God's blessings. You don't pay. It's all by grace. It's all by faith. If you don't have a dime in your pocket, he said, come ye to the waters and drink. Taste and see that he is good. There are many that claim to be spirit-filled and they've fallen into the same trap that the Catholic Church fell into in the 1500s. Instead of indulgences, it's called sowing a seed. Instead of popes, they're super evangelists or super apostles. Instead of an untouchable priesthood, people throw money at celebrity preachers who own private jets. We need to get back to the fear of God where holiness is demanded of his people. We need to get back to the book, back to the word of God, back to the truth of God's holy word. People can attend a spirit-filled church in name only and they'll never hear the word holiness and they'll never hear the word sanctification. The church has become professionalized to the point that we've lost the wonder and we've lost the awe of the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, the people wondered. The people stood in awe. The people marveled at what they were seeing take place. But today, the church is unimpressed. The church is unimpressive to the world while people sit around yawning and sleeping instead of being amazed at the mighty power of God. People are amused at the lack of power in the church today. We cannot be a Pentecostal church without the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter if the sign says Church of God, Assembly of God, Pentecostal Holiness, Church of God of Prophecy, Church of God in Christ. You cannot be a Pentecostal church without the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. George Whitfield said, the Holy Spirit is the least known, least loved, and least worshipped member of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a divine person equal with the Father and the Son in the Trinity. These three are equal in power, wisdom, and majesty. All possess the same attributes. The Holy Spirit may be called the executive member of the Godhead for he is in the world to carry out the plan and the purpose of God the Father and God the Son. Let me say there is no doctrine that has been more misused, abused, and dishonored than that of the Holy Spirit of God. He's God. Just like God the Father, God the Son, he's God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But we become so sophisticated, we become so dignified until we have turned our noses up at the demonstration and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. When King David danced before the ark of the Lord, his wife despised him. She was embarrassed by his actions. She became barren as a result and so will we if we quench the spirit of God. If we grieve the Holy Ghost, we'll become dry and we'll become barren. Without the spirit, there is no life. Without the spirit, there is no fire. Without the spirit, there is no vitality. We must be filled with the spirit. Several years ago, we had a couple of families to leave our church Wonderful families, I loved them. Hated to see them go. But I received an email from each of them explaining why they had left the church. One couple said, quote, we decided the style and intensity of worship was higher than we are comfortable with. Despite my Pentecostal upbringing, we felt out of place or unable to participate at that level, unquote. The second couple said, we have decided to explore some other churches in the area. We were finding ourselves questioning if the Pentecostal church is correct for us. After lots of prayer and discussion, we have decided to look into some other denominations, unquote. But let me tell you this morning, we will never apologize for being a Pentecostal church. 
We will never apologize for being Pentecostal, full of the Holy Ghost. We should never be ashamed. We should never be embarrassed at the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. There's plenty of dead churches you can go to. There's plenty of dry preachers you can listen to. There's plenty of places you can go where you can be cool, calm, and collected. But God helped the Matthew Church of God to never lose its power and never lose its fire and never lose its anointing. We are Pentecostal because we're full of the Holy Ghost. We should never apologize for that. But every Pentecostal church should apologize for being Pentecostal in name only. Where Ichabod has been written over the door. The glory departed long ago. They're like Samson who went out and shook himself and didn't even know. The Lord had departed from him. There's a lot of shaking going on. There's a lot of jumping and running going on. But where's the spirit? Where's the spirit? We've got to have the spirit in order for the church to be spirit filled. Every member of the church needs to be full of the Holy Ghost. You say, oh, pastor, I love Jesus. If you love Jesus, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem until you receive the promise. Tarry ye until your spirit filled. It's his a will. He breathed on his disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. There's no spirit. But here's my prayer, the prayer of the psalmist David in Psalm 51 and 11. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not the Holy Spirit from the church. I don't want us to be a nominal church. I don't want us to be a dead church. I, I've, I've been in some churches, uh, maybe during uh, Thanksgiving. I remember one year that we had a uh, community service at a church as where they do everything by rope, where they read everything, everything is read, everything from the beginning to the end. They march in with their flags and they, they go through all the rituals and routine. That's not church. That's not church. You should be able to feel the presence of God when you drive up on the parking lot. When you're riding by the road, there's just something drawing you in to the house of God. I just got to go by. I got to go see. I got to check out that church. There's something about that church. I want to check it out. It may not be what you're expecting, but that's all right. The Spirit of God is going to do His part in drawing and wooing and convicting and touching the hearts. It's up to you to receive it. It's up to you to accept it. It's up to you to respond to it. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We need another Pentecost. But it comes from heaven. It's not manufactured by the pastor. It's not manufactured by the choir or the special singers or musicians. It comes from heaven. Oh God, would you rend the heavens and come down. Would you open up the heavens and pour out your spirit upon us. Holy Spirit of God, descend upon us. The source of Pentecost is heaven. The force of Pentecost, you see it in verses two and three. A rushing, muddy wind. Cloven tongues like as a fire. The study of the person of the Holy Ghost is called pneumatology. The pneuma in the Greek means wind and it means breath. When the Spirit came in the fullness on the day of Pentecost, he came as a rushing mighty wind a mighty wind. It reminds us of the sound of the trumpet. It reminds us of the great strong wind that, that rent Horeb, the mountains of Horeb. The wind was felt and heard. That same breath that moved upon the holy men of God to speak the word of God. The same spirit that Ezekiel called upon to breathe upon the dry bones in the valley and they came to life. Oh, there was wind that was blowing the wind of the spirit. A blast of wind is what we need to Today to blow away the cobwebs and to get rid of the dust. Let the wind of the Spirit blow once again. Then there were cloven tongues like a fire that set upon each of them. Jeremiah said, His word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, Hebrews 1 7, He makes His ministers a flame of fire. D.O. Moody said, oh God, don't just warm me up, but make me red hot. Let me be on fire with the Spirit. Make me a firebrand plucked out of the fire. Let me be anointed of the Holy Ghost. And old Proverbs 26, 20 says, where there is no wood, where, the, where no wood is, 
is there, the fire goeth out. We're commanded to keep the fire burning. The fire shall never be burning upon the altar. The scripture says it shall never go out because fire is a symbol of the presence of God. You see it in the burning bush. You see it in the pillar of fire. You see it in the fire that consumed the sacrifices. You see it in the coal of fire that touched the lips of Isaiah. You see it in the fiery furnace. You see it on the day of Pentecost with the cloven tongues of fire. Oh yes, fire is symbolic of the presence of God. Isaiah calls him the spirit of burning. Malachi said he is like a refiner's fire. Hebrews says he's a consuming fire. With Pentecost, you have the force of wind and you have the force of fire. We know that wind feeds fire. Wind fans the flame. Wind can change speed. Wind can change direction. Wind can come gusting in. Oh, how we need, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost to come rushing in upon us. Oh, yes, we do. We need the Holy Ghost to come down once again as a rushing mighty wind has cloven tongues of fire setting upon each of us. Jesus told Nicodemus, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst, cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. You can't tell. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. They didn't see it coming. They didn't see it coming because it came from heaven. They were looking down in fear. They were looking down in despair. They were looking down, wondering what was, the future was going to hold, what they were going to face. But oh, there came a sound from heaven. The wind came in from heaven. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. Look up and live. Look up to Jesus. Look up to heaven. Look up, lift up your heads and see the glory of God. Look up and see that he's still on his throne. You don't have to to live in despair. You don't have to be depressed and worried, but look up and see him who is great and mighty. Look up and see him sitting on his throne. He is God and nothing changes in him. He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's hard to see anything coming when you're looking down. But then they felt its force. The power that Jesus said would come upon them. And Acts 1 and 8 came upon them. Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or clothed with power from on high. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Do you hear what he's saying here? You're gonna receive power. You're gonna receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You're gonna receive power. What a promise that he gave to them. Here's a group of people without any power. They didn't have any position. They didn't have any influence. They didn't have any authority. But Jesus said, you're going to receive power. You're going to receive power. The power that Jesus was talking about was not the kind of power they were thinking about. Because there are many today who want political power. They want influential power. But it's not by political might. It's not by the power of influence. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be witnesses. We need the Holy Ghost to help us, to empower us for service. I don't want to be dead and dried up on the vine. I want to be full of the Spirit, vibrant with the wine of the Spirit, full of the Holy Ghost and joy. The word Pentecost, it means 50th. It was 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, after his resurrection, the Holy Ghost came in his fullness. 50 days. 50 days after Jesus got up, the Holy Ghost came down. 50 days. Pentecost is the exclamation point of his birth, 
his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. It's the exclamation point. He said, when I get back to the Father, I'll send the Holy Ghost to you. Knowing that the Holy Ghost has come, it lets us know that Jesus is not on the cross, he's not in the tomb, but he's on the right hand of the Father ever making intercession for us. Jesus passed the baton to the church. He passed the baton at Pentecost. Pentecost is the therefore of to the church to continue on the work of the Lord. He says in Matthew 28, 19, go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. When, you ta- when we take you under the water, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what he said to do. He commissioned the church. Thank God he commissioned us. He said in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than the shall he do because I go unto my Father. Not greater in measure, but greater in scope because all over the world we're full of the Holy Ghost doing the work of God, fulfilling the great commission. The Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost to give boldness and to give power to the church. I was such a bashful teenager, so bashful, easily embarrassed, so shy, But oh, something got a hold of me as a 16-year-old. Baptized me in the Holy Ghost. What a difference he made in my life. There's nothing like it in all this world. The power that accompanied the ministry of Jesus is synonymous with the power and the work of the Holy Ghost. Peter was preaching in the household of Cornelius. He was preaching to those Gentiles and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It was this same spirit that worked miracles and gave boldness and raised Jesus from the dead. It was this Holy Ghost power that enabled the apostles to do miracles. 1 Corinthians 4.20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of power. Kingdom of power and God intends for his church to be a church of power. He intends his church to be a church of power. If we're not a church of power, Paul said we only have a form of godliness denying the power thereof from such turn away. If we don't have the power of God in the church then we are in error. Jesus said to the Sadducees, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of of God. We've got to have the power of God to break the chains, to break the bondage that people are under. If you want to be set free, it's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost, not some little evening vesper, not some little bedtime story, not some little fireside chat. It's going to take the power of preaching, the power of singing, the power of worship, the power of praying. It's going to take the power of God in all that we do to set the captive free. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you. Hallelujah. The Greek word for power is dudamus. It's the same word from where we get our English words, dynamo, dynamic, and dynamite. Dynamo is a generator or a turbine that produces power. Dynamic refers to someone who is energetic, lively, active, and forceful that motivates others into action. And dynamite produces an explosive outburst of power. Oh, you see what the Lord left the church? He didn't want us to be a church sitting off in a room somewhere, shaking and trembling in fear. He didn't want us to be a church that's hiding away somewhere in a monastery. But he said, I want you to step out on the stage of this world. I want you to proclaim the gospel without fear and reservation in the power of the Holy Ghost that my preaching and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul said, oh yes, we've got to proclaim it. We've got to sing it. We've got to stand upon the word of God. The Holy Ghost is with you. He's given you the Holy Ghost that you will witness for him. Hallelujah. The New Testament church was born. It operated in dunamis. So you've got, you've got the sources from heaven. You've got the force, 
with the wind and the fire. But what about the course? Verse two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house, all the house where they were sitting. Filled the whole house. I've always wondered what it would be like. That's my dream church. It's for everybody in the church to be full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody in the church. That's what happened at Pentecost. There was not one person said, oh, I don't understand. I, I, I don't know why I don't receive the Holy Ghost. I don't know why I don't have the Holy Ghost. Everybody, everybody was filled. You couldn't even be a deacon in that early church unless you were full of the Holy Ghost. You couldn't even be a deacon. You, could, you couldn't be a janitor in the church unless you were full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody was filled with the Spirit. Everywhere they went, they wanted everybody to receive the Holy Ghost. Paul went to Ephesus. He said, if you receive the Holy Ghost, since you believe, they said, we haven't heard about the Holy Ghost. He said, well, I showed up just in time. Let me tell you about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And he laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost and prophesied and glorified God. Suddenly the whole house even the whole church, which is the house of God, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. This is not confined to the mountains of North Carolina where the church of God originated from. It's not confined to Cleveland, Tennessee. It's not confined, confined to certain areas of the country, but the whole earth is filled with his glory. He said, for, un, for the promises unto you and to your children, oh, we need our children full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 16 years old. It's pretty tough being a teenager into teenagers. Pretty tough, you know, it's probably even tougher now than it was when I was a teenager, but I remember how it was. I was shy, I was bashful till I got the Holy Ghost, but when I, when I would go to school full of the Holy Ghost and God had called me to preach at 17 years old, I was witnessing and preaching on school buses. I was talking to those around me about the Lord. People were telling me to pray for them and I would pray for them. I want you to know the Holy Ghost to give you the boldness. He'll allow you to come out of your shell of your bashfulness and your shyness and you'll say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Because you're full of the Holy Ghost. I used to tell folks when I'd go to school before I received the Holy Ghost, I was almost ashamed. I was almost embarrassed to tell them I went to the church of God because they called us holy rollers. They called us fanatics. They called us crazy. They said all sorts of things about us and they'd say, where you go to church? I said, I go to the church down in Cornelius and they said, which church is it? I said, it's the one on the corner of Oak and Hickory Street. I wouldn't tell them what church it was, but when I got the Holy Ghost, I said, I go to the church of God. I'm proud of the church of God, a Pentecostal church full of the Spirit of God. I'm not ashamed of my Pentecostal heritage. I'm not so dignified and sophisticated that I can't rejoice in the Lord. He saved me. He bought me. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm a vessel. I'm a temple. No, you're not. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They were all filled. Everybody, old and young alike, all filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know what they did? They all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let me tell you, I was so focused on receiving the Holy Ghost, I didn't think about what it was going to be like afterwards. You know, it's just, you know, just pray and Everybody tells you to go to the altar and just say hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, glory to God, glory to God. You can say that as fast as you want to, as many times as you want to. It doesn't guarantee you're gonna receive the Holy Ghost. It's gotta come out of your heart. And all oh, when it starts coming out of your heart, when you mean every word of it, there's something, there's a connection between earth and heaven. Something opens up a channel, a conduit through which the spirit can flow. He inhabits our praises. He flows in on the wings of praise. But I receive the Holy Ghost. And the next day while I was praying, while I was praying, the Holy Ghost was speaking through me and it caught my attention. I had, hadn't even thought about it. After I received the Holy Ghost, I don't know what I was thinking. I just received the Holy Ghost. That was the, that was the goal. That was the point. Receive the Holy Ghost. But oh, receiving him is just the start. It's just the beginning. This is the beginning of that. This is that which was. This is this. This is that what we're talking about. I received the Holy Ghost and oh, he would speak through me and thank God for it. And Peter... And all the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost and they found themselves out in the street. There were people there from all over the world, from every walk of life. And they said, oh, what is this we hear? We, we, they marveled, they were amazed. 
they, they couldn't believe what they were seeing and what they were hearing. And uh, they, somebody said, this is the marvelous works of God, wonderful works of God. This is of God. But there was some old wag in the crowd that said, oh, you men are drunk on you wine. You've been drinking this morning. That's what's going on. All this gibberish we hear, all this babbling going on. You've been drinking. And you talk about getting stirred up. We ought to get stirred up when people mock the Holy Ghost and mock the manifestation of the Spirit. Peter stood up. The 11 stood up with him. They said, whatever he's about to say, we're gonna sign our name to it. Whatever he's gonna say, you can put our name to it. Peter said, I want you to know that these men are not drunk as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. They would come to pass in the last days, say of God, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. He said, you're witnessing the fulfillment of prophecy. This is what God said he would do and he has done it this is that we are witnesses of that we are partakers of that he's filled us with the Holy Ghost they were no longer paralyzed with fear they had a boldness about them he said this is that this is the prophecy this is the fulfillment this is the promise that he made to us but he said I want you to know today this is not just for us it's not just for a select group it's not just for a group of folks but he said, this promise is for you, every one of you. Not only you, but for your children, your grandchildren, even to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I read the wonderful story of R.A. Torrey. I love to read R.A. Torrey. His books are tremendous. And he said he began to study the word. Let me tell you, just study the word. A lot of people just don't know the word. They can tell you what some televangelist said. They can tell you what what the latest novel is, but they can tell you the word of God. He said he studied the word. And said as he began to study the word, he saw things such as baptized with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit fell upon them and endued with power from on high. And one after another, he saw these phrases. And it became clear to him that he should be baptized with the Spirit or feel with the Spirit, an experience that he knew he did not possess. He knew he didn't have the full feeling of the Spirit, so he earnestly sought the Lord to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, and God gave him the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and he said it transformed his life and his ministry. He sought God. He'll not withhold any good thing from those that love him. If you're lacking, it's on your part. It's not on his part. All the blessings of the Lord are mine. The blessings of God are flowing down from heaven above. In ancient times, the Greek word baptizo was used in several different ways. It was used to describe a sunken ship where every compartment of the ship became flooded. It was used for dyeing a garment to where a garment would take on a new dimension of beauty with all the vibrant colors, the different colors that it would be dyed in. It was used to describe the dipping of a morsel of bread that became saturated with liquid. So to be baptized with the Holy Ghost means that he floods every compartment of our lives that he wants to saturate every fiber of our being, that he wants to feel every void. Let me tell you, it's an experience like no other to be filled with the Spirit of God. He wants to fill you to overflowing. You can't run over till you get, get filled. You can't flow over till you get filled. But then he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What powerful anointing, what powerful unction, and oh, what a difference he makes. You know, before the Holy Ghost, before... You your spirit filled. You can pray some sweet prayers. You can pray some nice prayers, some niceties. You can say all the things that are prim and proper. You can, you can say all the thuses and the thous and our Father in heaven, but oh, it takes on a new dimension when you get full of the Holy Ghost, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, you're able to 
to plow through the barriers the devil puts in your path. You're able to take hold of the promises of God. You've got the Holy Ghost in you and upon you and with you. And oh, there's power, there's victory, overcoming power in the Holy Ghost. Would you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel him today, I feel him. Hallelujah, while the heads are bowed, just a moment, the saints are praying. He's simply waiting for a willing vessel. I had to be willing to go to an altar and pray. I'd played around, I'd gone through the motions, but it was the night that I went to an altar of prayer and said, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost and I believe he's for me. I began to thank him for this wonderful gift. He is a gift. Began to praise him for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And oh, what a powerful experience. Changed and transformed my life. The source is from heaven. Doesn't come from a preacher. Doesn't come from any type of mechanics. Comes from heaven. The force is wind and fire and power. And the course is to all who are hungry and thirsty. The promise is to you. If you haven't received the promise, if you haven't received the blessing, the Spirit of God, you're living beneath your privilege. Let me tell you, if you haven't noticed, we're living in the last days. If you've ever needed the Holy Ghost, you need Him now. He'll reveal things to you. He'll show you. He'll help you to understand, to discern all the wonderful gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing and faith and miracles the gift of wisdom and knowledge and discernment, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy, the fruit that is so wonderful, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, all the benefits of being spirit-filled, anointed of God. Oh, the Lord wants you to enjoy the fullness of his presence. You know, if Jesus were here today, if he was here physically, everybody would want to be close to him. They would want to be around him. They would want, to, want to spend day and night with him. They wouldn't want him to be out of their sight. Jesus said, it's important for you that I go away because if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But he said, I'm going to send you the promise. I'm going to send you the comforter that he might abide with you forever. He'll be there with you to teach you. He'll be there to instruct you, to give you direction. He'll be there to warn you. He'll give you guidance. He'll illuminate the word of God for you. And when you worship, it takes on a whole new dimension when you're full of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter how much talent you have or how much ability you have, you need the Holy Ghost because apart from Him, it becomes fleshly and carnal. We worship God in spirit and in truth. I wonder today on this Pentecost Sunday, is there somebody who'll come forward and say, Lord, I want to receive my promise. I want to receive the Holy Ghost. I want to be like R.A. Torrey. I want to ask you, I want to seek you earnestly that I might be filled. And as soon as he sought him, he received him. All you've got to do is ask. He said, and you shall receive. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. Young people, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Moms and dads, you need the Holy Ghost. Grandparents, you need the Holy Ghost. Nothing like it in all this world. If we didn't need him, the Lord would not have sent him. But he said, I send you the promise. He sent us the Holy Ghost. And all who ask and believe shall receive. Would you come today? Let this be the day God floods your heart and your soul with his spirit. Let this be the day the wind of the spirit blows into your life. The fire rests upon you. The Holy Ghost feels you. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you today. We worship you. We honor you. We exalt you. We lift up our voices to you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for Pentecost. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave us comfortless, but you sent another comforter. You sent the Holy Ghost to abide with us forever. And oh, God, help us not to live beneath our privilege. Help us, Lord, not to be stubborn or proudful. Help us not, Lord, to, to go through life without receiving all that you want for us, but to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Oh, God, we bless you today. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. I bless you, Lamb of God, Holy Spirit of God. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. 
Oh, yes, oh, yes. Hallelujah. Would you just lift your hands right now? Receive from him the renewal, the refreshing, the reviving of the Spirit. Lord, help me today. Help me, Lord, today not to live half full or half empty. Help me not to live, Lord, just trying to get by, but let me live in the fullness of the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. I bless you. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way today, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Renew our strength. Renew our minds. Chase away all fear and doubt. Oh, God, help us, help us, help us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. We welcome you, Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Bless his wonderful name. Bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you sing? Hallelujah. Sing with him, if you will, please. Let it be a prayer to him. Holy Spirit, welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Help us not to sin against you, not to grieve, to quench, to vex the Spirit. Oh, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Sing it, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in my place. You're welcome in my life, in my house. We welcome you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lord. might be going down the road in the car. You might be by the dinner table or bedside, wherever it is. You let the Holy Ghost have his way. He came upon them suddenly. He can come on you suddenly. He's just looking for a hungry, willing vessel. God help us that every member of this church will become spirit-filled. Everybody that walks in these doors will have a desire to be full of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. What a difference he makes. Aren't you thankful today for the gift of the Holy Ghost? Praise God. Hallelujah. You have not, he said, because you ask not. Amen. You ask, you shall receive. It's not a hard thing. I used to think it was one of the hardest things in the world. And after I received the Holy Ghost, I said, boy, that was so simple. In fact, I've seen young children receive the Holy Ghost. It's that simple. Amen. It's not a hard thing. Don't make it hard. Just ask and believe and you shall receive. If you're saved and sanctified, you've got everything under the blood. There's no reason in the world why you can't be filled with the Spirit. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Aren't you glad to be in church? Praise God. Praise God. Look forward to it. The fellowship of the saints. Praise God. We have missed you. I tell you, those weeks, I guess it was two months or so, 
We met here with just a praise team and uh, preached to the pews just like you were here, sung to the pews just like you were here, but there's nothing like the real thing. Amen. We can try to imagine something in our minds, but it's not the real thing. But your being here, amen, has been a blessing. We praise God for you. We pray for you every day that God will keep you well, that he will surround you with his protective care and keeping power, that he'll keep this virus away from all of our people, our congregation. We're praying for God to deliver our nation and the nations of this world, that we need revival, we need a move of God. It cannot be legislated, it cannot be commanded by the military or by the police department or by the president or the Congress or Senate. It takes the move of God. When people get right with God and repent of their sins, He will heal the land. That's what we need. Pray for revival, that God would touch the nations of the world. God bless you. Would you stand? We'll be dismissed. Again, it's good to have you that are visiting. Thank you so very much for being with us, Sister Blake. It's good to have you back. We missed you. Some others here today, we haven't seen you in a while. We're glad that you're here. We appreciate your coming. You're looking good. This is a good-looking congregation on Sunday morning. We still have some that are sick and some that are uh, because of their health condition are unable to attend. But thank you for coming and being with us today. God bless you. Whatever you feel like doing, amen, you do, and uh, be dismissed. God bless you. Amen.